Band-Aid, ban Welcome to uh, the first episode of Mean Opinion. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing three tracks that have been suggested by the mainstream media as the greatest musical tunes of the week. Uh, we've got Parquet Courts, Content Noisier, uh, we've got D-Mob Happy with Succubus, and we've got Band A30, naturally. Uh, this is Dean. Hello everyone. I'm Matt. And we're going to kick things off with Parquet Courts, which uh, their new track off their new album called Content Noisier has been suggested by Grace Jason Green from Pitchfork. He says it's the best new track of the week. Uh, and what he says about it is it begins with a jittery power chord strum, evoking fingers nervously drumming a study hall desk. Sounds like it could be. Uh, could, it, <laughs> could be interesting. Uh, eyeballs vibrating in their sockets. The drum roll is clumsy and distracted. The paradiddle of a high school marching band. The effect is stunning and exhausting. Let's find out as we have a quick listen to this, the first track from the Parquet Courts. World War IV seems like it all came too soon. Another carnage apparatus, such a disappointing doom. Abuse money, abuse drugs, abuse body, abuse mind. People use such strange excuses, always have to, no clue why. Most folks think that some folks know. Life's the peace when you don't let go of a memory, of a dream. So that was Parquet Courts uh, with Content Noiser, which is out on Rough Trade now as a single on SoundCloud. The links will be somewhere. Um, yeah, Dean. Uh, it's absolute. Shit. I mean, I've got to be honest. No, 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 let's be honest. Wow, don't hold back. Was, well, I liked the first album. I enjoyed the first album. There was some good tracks in it. Yeah, yeah, it was, I was looking forward to the new album, and I was thinking, you know, here we go. We've got another new album coming yeah. out. What are they going to do? They're going to do something different? Hope not too different. Well, and they did they, do something different. They did something different. Yeah. They've run out of a chorus idea. That's basically what they did. And a middle eight, and a verse, and a riff, yeah. and a bass line. Yeah. And they've run out of music, Yeah, so, which yeah. for a band is... Uh, it's probably a problem. Uh, you were saying while we were listening that it's very much like one of those performance art pieces where yes. you've got a, a man naked wearing a nappy eating his own shit. Yes, <laughs> rolling in it. And behind yeah. him there's a dog in a tutu doing like the can-can and you're just meant to work out yeah, that that, uh, that definitely resonates with the modern capitalistic yeah. world. I wouldn't listen to it in the car, I wouldn't listen to it at home, I wouldn't listen to it ever. Absolutely. <laughs> That's it, done. No more <laughs> listens. Right, moving on. Uh, the next song is D-Mob Happy Never Heard Them with Succubus, which has been suggested by Gwilym Mumford of, I presume, The Sons, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's the brother of the other one. But they've got a buzz um, behind in this band. They've they got a buzz behind um, the band, so. He's from The Guardian, and he said this is the best new track of the week. What he said about it is it's guitar music's fight back against royal blood, <laughs> and their turgid assembly line riffs begins in earnest with this unkept brighter lot. Fight and talk. He studied English. He did, yeah. yeah. It's very poetic what comes next. We're off on a joyride through rock sleazier back alleys, whizzing gleefully past funhouse era stooges, queens of the Stone Age when they sounded a bit like Caius, and even Beck slacker years. Full stop, fun exclamation mark. That's how he's described it. Let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> was uh, D-Mob Happy with Succubus, they're from Brighton, and apparently the best track of the week according to The Guardian. Dean? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I like the name, I, I quite like the riff. <laughs> D-Mob Happy? Yeah, I don't know what that is, it, <laughs> I could assume, I haven't got a clue, but uh, I quite like the name, I, I quite like the riff, mm -hmm. it's got something going on, but it doesn't really go anywhere, does it? They've obviously been listening to a bit of Tame Impala, they're trying oh. to sound American, they're from Brighton. It's not, they're they've not got potential. The they've got it's, yeah. they're a, they could be a good second album band, maybe. Uh, they need to grow into the music. Yeah, maybe. Out of the there. three tracks we're doing today, it's the best song. Just put it out there. Spoiler alert. The Spoiler next alert. Song. Don't watch the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as with anything on the internet, the best thing about the song is the comments. Uh, because it's on SoundCloud, which the link will be there. Um, and the comments on it first one reminds me of White Zombie. 
No. no. <laughs> not just, at all. No, not at all. Have you heard no. White Zombie? He's probably a White Zombie now. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. bit of Astro Creep 2000. Hello. Uh, the next one. Holy Base Fuzz Batman! Exclamation mark. Love this. It's Fuzzy Who Base. Who is that? Yeah. Uh, sheer Filth, said another person. Um, filth? I've no. not seen your hard drive. Yeah, yeah well, no, absolutely <laughs> not. I'll, I'll tell you yeah. a thing about filth. Yeah. And then uh, the final one that I liked was just some French guy that said Junio. Oh, we need translations for that. We do. Yeah. Um, as this says, Junio means. Oh. And that's the blue screen. Moving on, uh, the final track that we're going to review today on the first ever Mean Opinion is. Band Aid 30. Um, there's been. It's got to be done. At least three beforehand. Um, They've come back. There's a problem in West Africa. It's called Ebola. It's a very sad problem. It's a terrible problem. The um, cause, yeah, it's terrible. It's been going on for a long time, and there's been countless money raising schemes to try and help fix it. But what it needed was Bob Geldof to come along and go. You know what? I made a song thirty years ago, which is perfect to this. So let's have a listen, and then uh, we'll give you the opinion uh, if you can guess what it might be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a band aid. They've done, they've done so many versions of this bloody song now. Uh, to four? Four. They've got the state, state water house, whatever, the 80s. The steak water house? <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a restaurant. No, Just, uh, Stone yeah. Lake in and water house, whatever they were called. Uh, Waterman. Waterman? Yes, Waterman, yeah. yes. They, Waterman. they did a good, they did Famous possibly, train hobbyist. Possibly the best version. No, for me, <laughs> the, the, the honest truth of it is, and it's the sad truth of it all, and despite the terrible subject it's about, is. It re- makes me realise that today's artists all sound the <laughs> same. You know, the first five singers all today's modern artists, aren't they? Yeah, I don't yeah. even know them, I'm old, whatever, but they all sound <laughs> the f- same. They've all got the same vocals. They've got, they, there's no difference. That's auto-tune. Like, that's that's uh, the way it is. It's the sad truth of it all, you know. And the, you, know you, can, you can't tell the difference between them, they all sound exactly the same. They all feel like they've been dripped off of Simon Cowell's bloody tissues, you know. They're just literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> it's literally. Kleenex supply. <laughs> How does that work? I was going to say nibbles, but I thought that was a bit much. Because what was. <laughs> Nipples and Kleenex, they're, they're not the same thing. You don't uh, suckle on a Kleenex. You might wipe afterwards, doesn't it? Well, you know, yeah, yeah they, they come after each other. Anyway, so, they're Simon Cowell's teat mm. they've been suckling on. Simon Cowell has decided what a singer should sound like, and the rest of the <laughs> UK, you lot out there, are listening to this shit and voting for it, X Factor, saying, oh, I like that one because he sounds the same as the other one. Where's the original singers now? You know, where's the Joe Strummers of this world? Where's the... I'm obviously going to mention The Clash for those that know me. <laughs> but, yeah, where are the people with original vocals? And the only people, you know, that actually have got a decent voice are people like Coldplay when they come in. And, you know, I know his voice. It's a bit different, a bit weird. I don't like Coldplay. Do you need to do this again when there's so many other charities... Out there, the way he beat up that other girl, that other modern singer, that um, Adele. Sorry, he was... beat her up. <laughs> oh, he did. That's a bit of a strong statement to make. <laughs> you like my song? Yeah. Take, take that. What's uh, her name? Retract the, that. The uh, South Londoner. Adele. Adele. Yeah. He didn't yeah, beat Adele. her up. No, but well, he no. didn't beat her up. Right. <laughs> the original Band Aid, you know, it was a shit song, but it had, you know, it showed that there was a lot of good artists out at the time. There was a good cause behind it. It was, a, you know, it was a real feeling at the time in the eighties, and now it's just a gash, <laughs> and it's literally. Absolute trouble. It's just an excuse for people to go and do that on an headset, sell a record for Christmas. Okay, you're at a Christmas party. Yeah. And you're you've had a few snowballs. You're a little yeah, bit. Really, a nice time, yeah. You're having a lovely time. It's about nine o'clock, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go to bed in about half an hour. So I want to do one Christmas song, and that one Christmas song is Band Aid. Mm. You waddle up to the the uh, the DJ, and you're like, all right, mate, uh, I want to hear Band Aid. That, is that DJ, your impression of me? Yeah, that's, that's my impression of you. Yeah. That DJ is not going to go. Is that the uh, the original, the uh, Band Aid Twenty, the Band Aid Thirty, or the uh, Stock Aid <laughs> Steakhouse? Think about that. <laughs> Which like, one do you want? Which uh, I've got some Band Aids. I got some Band Aids for you. Which one, what kind of Band Aids you want? Uh, no, he's going to just play the original. Yeah, he's going to put culture. He's going to have Boy George in there. Yeah. He's going to have Wham in there. They're going to have a awesome time. Paul Simon, bless him. He Paul Simon was in that. Oh, not Paul Simon. 
Oh, what's he doing? <laughs> he's busy then. <laughs> what's the 80s singer that's got a name? The up? 80s singer that's got a name like Paul Simon. <laughs> oh, I can't Phil remember. Collins? No, no, he plays the drums in it actually. He does, yeah, he does. He ruined Led Zeppelin's career. I can't remember, so forget that. Yeah, forget that. Anyway, so there you go. That's it. Band Aid 30. Uh, uh, no, just donate to the Ebola crisis through deck or something. Rather we put that up on there. Yeah, donate there. It's not our charity, but we we thoroughly endorse this message. Um, so that's it. There you go. Mean Opinion episode one done. If you want to get in contact with the show, if you want our opinion on anything, uh, at Mean Opinion on Twitter or Facebook.com forward slash Mean Opinion. And for those of you watching on YouTube, there's a subscribe button there. Bye. Laters.